Hello, my friends. I have been doing the work that I'm blessed to do since I was 18 years old. That's over 40 years. The poet Khalil Gibran, he says that our work is our love made visible. Isn't that beautiful? Our work is our love made visible. And I recognize at this time in my life how blessed I am that I have somehow was guided to follow my own love into this work that is so fulfilling and, and enriching. And the work has been for myself and for all those with whom I get to work and explore. The work has been the journey has been the seeking and, and revealing of truth and beauty and love. That's always been my, my inclination, is just to pursue the recognition that this life is sacred, that it is precious, and there's so much beauty and love. And to know that beauty and love is to be in the truth of our own being and in the truth of life. And in, in all this time with everyone I've worked with in, since college, the most common theme, if I can distill it, of what most everyone is seeking and pursuing is a sense of more. It's a, it's a sense, it's an innate sense that this is all pretty amazing. To be a human spiritual being is amazing. And most people aren't naming it that, but there's a sense that to be this human spiritual being is a precious, amazing opportunity. And there's so much opportunity to feel more, more alive, more wholeheartedly alive. More, more connected, more, more in our vitality, more love, more grace, more peace. We start to recognize that, that there's a common struggle that we all pretty much experience that, that translates to some level of why, why? Why is this more difficult than I think it needs to be? Not just externally, like the circumstances, but in the way that I navigate it all. This is, this is not easy. There's a lot of dynamic complexity to be the, being this human spiritual being in relationship with an ever-changing world and, and, and people and conditions and situations. So the most common seeking is a seeking for grace, is a seeking for what does it take? What are, what's, what's necessary to live this life with more equanimity, with more love, with more peace, with more connection and with more wholehearted aliveness. And after doing this work for, again, over 40 years, guiding people in all manner of ways, I've actually discovered that it all, all comes down to one thing. Seriously, there's, there's a lot of different parts that we can do and with ways that we can come into our peace and our wholeness and our grace, but it all hinges on one thing. And I wanna share that with you today. I wanna to share with you today what I've learned after a lot of time and years and effort and, and struggle and challenge and exploration and discovery. It's been a big adventure. And I wanna share with you today, what is that one thing? Cowboy leads a different kind of life. 
when they wear cowboys. They're a dying breed. Still means something to me, though. A couple of days, we'll move this herd across the river, driving through the valley. Oh, <laughs> there's nothing like bringing in a herd. See, now that's great. Your life makes sense to you. <laughs> What's so funny? You city folk, you worry about a lot of shit, don't you? Shit? Yeah. My wife basically told me she doesn't want me around. She read it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, how old are you? 38. 39. Yeah. You all come off here about the same age, same problems. Spend about 50 weeks a year getting knots in your rope, and then, and then you think two weeks up here will time for you. None of you get it. Do you know what the secret of life is? No, what? This. Your finger? One thing, just one thing. You stick to that and everything else don't mean shit. That's great, but what's the one thing? That's what you gotta figure out. I love that moment. I just love the heart and the vulnerability in that moment. And we have this opportunity now in our lives, in these times, to really bring our attention to what is that one thing that's going to set us free, that's going to help us know our true, deep, honest, authentic peace. We are living in times of great disorder. There's a author named Richard Rohr. I highly recommend his book, Falling Upwards. And Richard Rohr, he speaks to the idea that there is order in our early lives, an order we're born into, family, culture, religion. It's an order that we're handed that we're given, and it gives us a sense of place, perhaps, and maybe a sense of security. And then there's order that we create early in our lives, usually from a place of not yet knowing at all who we really are. So we create careers, often families, relationships. We're coming into a place now in our collective experience where so much of the order that we were handed that was just a part of the cultural societal order is falling apart. And Richard Rohr teaches us that when that order falls into disorder, even though that is often the times of great discomfort and uncertainty and unknowns, the gift is when that order falls into disorder, we have the opportunity right now to reorder our lives consciously around who we really are, the full wholeness of our spiritual being, to create a life that is in alignment with the totality of who we are as, as magnificent, sacred human spiritual beings. That's the times we are living in. So what is the one thing? And that is to know thyself. Sit with that for a second. What if the one thing that just cannot be avoided, that must be in place in order to live your life with even more consciousness and, and intention and purpose and love and authenticity and connection is to know thyself. That has been the absolute core, the foundation of all the wisdom traditions throughout time. 
know thyself. Fully, completely, every part, every dynamic of your complex and precious being. And what I have found in this work is that there are three central conversations that are necessary to be had in your own life to know thyself. And the first conversation is the conversation of who are you really? Ultimately, truly, essentially, what is the essential nature of our being? And this is the conversation of spiritual awakening. It is the conversation of, of awakening who we are transcendent of the personal human experience, the egoic experience that will end someday. It's all going to end someday. Who are you really, truly beyond the personal stories and sense of self? That's a very important conversation. It's a conversation that very few people are having, but more and more people are now wanting that conversation. The second conversation of knowing thyself is to know the personal self, to know the egoic construct, to know all the ways that we have constructed an identity that is actually veiling or obscuring or eclipsing the knowing of our true self, our divinity, our essential being. The second conversation is a conversation of starting to recognize all the different ways that we've been conditioned and programmed and often wounded in ways that create a way of living life that is being completely run and dictated by an idea of self, a construct of self that isn't who we really are. And if we don't know that, if we don't know how it's put together and how to work with it, how to heal dynamics of that self, how to love parts of that self, how to let go parts of that self and surrender into our truth, then we are pretty much living at the behest of our egoic conditioning. So that's the second conversation, to know the self that gets in the way of being the true self. The third conversation is the conversation about being consciously attentive to how we are creating our lives in a way that nourish and support those first two conversations. The third conversation is a conversation of awareness, of attentiveness, and looking at our lives, our environment, our, our relationships, our work, our way of engaging with the world, our, our physical nourishment and care to really, really pay attention to our studies and our practices and our devotions so that they are all mm, being attended to in a way that supports and nourishes us knowing ourselves fully. So after 40 some years of doing this work, of guiding, following my own love, and healing my own self. All the ways that I lived so many years completely consumed with a story of self that didn't feel at all worthy, that felt so much anxiousness and fear and uncertainty and doubt, that, that those three conversations when I brought myself fully to all three of them, that was the liberation. And that's what I want to share with you today. 
the opportunity to be in those three conversations. Because that's kind of the fourth part of this, is you have to stay in the conversations. The habitual way of being, the, the, what we call the dream state, the programmed, conditioned way of being, it's, it's strong and it's had a lot of mm, ramping up time. So to really be consciously, devotionally, lovingly attentive to these conversations of knowing ourselves takes a little bit of time. And we have to stay in the conversations. And that is why I'm inviting you today to join a growing community of people who are consciously attending to loving their lives, to loving this precious opportunity. I'm inviting you to join us in an online community of study and practice and live engagements, live calls and inspiration and guidance. And the online community that I've been blessed to create is called The Oasis. Nourishment for your soul. The Oasis, a place to gather, a place to come together on a regular basis where you know you're always going to find spiritual nourishment, where you're always going to find conversations, insight, guidance, opportunities to go deeper and deeper and more mm, broadly even into these central conversations of knowing yourself fully. Without a place to go on a regular basis, we get lost. We get lost in, in, in different modalities and, and, and going to retreat after retreat after retreat and reading book after book after book. Gleaning little bits of wisdom here and a little bit of insight there and trying to stitch it all together, or trying to kind of wing it and put together a, a, a different way of thinking or a different way of coping. And what the Oasis offers is an opportunity to know yourself fully. Who are you really? And to be more aware of all the ways that you get in the way of your own truth. The Oasis has been a labor of love, devotion, care. It's my Dharma. It's my path. It's my love made visible. And I want to share it because that's what love does. When love awakens, it just wants to be awakened everywhere. And if this resonates, if this is of interest, if this feels like an opportunity in your life to really bring your full attention and love and courage and devotion to living this precious life wholeheartedly alive and free and at peace and in love, then please come join us. Come play, come explore, come study, come practice, come engage. It's a beautiful journey. It's an amazing adventure. I've never found anything so fulfilling and enriching and nourishing than to be in these conversations of knowing ourselves fully. So I look forward to seeing you in the Oasis. And thank you for paying attention, for caring enough about love and truth and beauty 
to be on this path. Hmm. I look forward to being with you in the Oasis. So how do you come join us? It's simple. And it should all be simple. This should all be actually very simple. So click the link down below and it'll take you to a page that'll give you all the information you need to ensure that this is a place that feels nourishing to you. That is a place that feels in alignment with this time in your life and this time in the collective where we are all being asked to put down everything that no longer serves. To come into our fullness, our wholeness, our love. And to explore together, to create a new reality together from this place of truth and beauty and love. So just click below. It'll take you right to a page that'll give you all the information you need and an opportunity to join. I look forward to being with you soon.